This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Uh, delighted to be joined by Big Rogie, Mr. Martin Rogan. How are you, sir? I'm brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. How are you, mate? Man? All good? I'm all good. Um, just to let people know that you're in a parked car. You're not driving anywhere. You're just, you're just, no. you're still. <laughs> See, Paul just been taking off to try and relax a bit, you know. Hold on, I'll drop a stay in a bit so as you can. How's that? Is that a bit better? A little bit better. A little bit better. <laughs> hold on, hold on. We'll set this up a bit better. Like, nice. I feel like this is a bit of carpool karaoke. Like, you're going to start singing in a minute. We and you could get the where is it uh, Florida is it that where the, is that where the adult takes place or is it LA no it's LA isn't it yeah we could do a bit of singing hey you been keeping you start off with Marvin Gaye song and I'll I'll come in all right Marvin Gaye yeah yeah baby no just forget about it carry on man you you're just you just killed it all <laughs> I thought. <laughs> It's, it's actually somebody there grabbing you very deeply. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. How you been keeping? All good, mate. All good. Just flipping with this, this uh, global virus and, you know, government lockdown and stuff like that. I think everybody basically is the same all over the world. But you just have to do what you have to do and trying to abide by the rules and, you know, for the safety of everybody. And, so hopefully we'll, we'll come out of this. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people have died and um, a lot of people have been sick out of it. But hopefully we'll, we'll pull through and the whole world can get itself back on its feet again. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure everyone can uh, echo your thoughts there that we just, yeah, we want things to get back to normal as quick as possible. But yeah, obviously, you know, we've gone through a horrendous kind of three month period with, you know, deaths all over the world. And it's, uh, it's been, it has yeah. been horrendous. Horrendous! All the sports is all gone, and you know most of the world either they're involved in sport or they enjoy watching sport, and it's just everything's sort of even taken away. It just shows you, but how quickly everything can come to a halt, and how quick people's lifestyles can all be turned upside down. You mm. know, and it's not easy, especially the elderly people that are stuck at home. Like my own mother's eighty odd years of age. And she's at home, and we went down to see him. I had to sit in the garden at the back while she looked through the window talking to us. And a bit heartbreaking, too, you know, but a lot of people in the same boat. And then you've got a lot of people with mental health problems um, that need to be out and about and venturing and in the gyms and a lot of the, the physical gyms that aren't able to do it. But um, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, we'll get through this and hopefully it turns a corner. Mm, absolutely. Martin, the last time. I think I interviewed you was three years ago in 2017. Um, I can't exactly remember where we were. I'm going to assume it could have been Belfast. It probably was Belfast. No. Was it Europa? Possibly. I think it was like summer of 2017. Yeah, something like that, yeah. yeah. And, uh, I mean, you hadn't fought for three years on from there and you were kind of saying to me that you hadn't kind of fully retired, but I'm assuming now six years on from your last fight, you're, you're kind of done now. <laughs> when I say <laughs> done, let me, let me rephrase that. You are happily retired. I never ever said I was retired. <laughs> this is what I feared. Mike Tyson's back. A father Holyfield's back. Lennox Lewis is making an appearance. Um, uh, Bernard Hopkins didn't stop till he was over 50. Um, and I've always said age is not a, it's not a disability. It's a number. And it's all about what way you treat yourself and you, you look after yourself. Taking into consideration that I didn't start boxing until I was 30. Basically 30 years of age. So age to me is, is something that I don't even consider. But your last fight was in 2014. I think it was Sprott, wasn't it? Your last, your last professional Michael fight. Michael Sprott. Michael, I'm coming after you again. You beat me by a point, Michael. I will get you. <laughs> but surely six, yeah. years, six years from then, Martin, you, you're being serious. You, what, you'd get back in the ring now? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I've been training the way. Before this lockdown, I was training the way. I was in sparring and in sparring with later weights than me. and 
I, I know a lot of people would have a lot of contradictions. Basically, uh, you know, do they have do they, do they have the contradictions for your safety, or do they have contradictions because it's something that they just follow suit that everybody else says it. But um, my reflexes are far from gone, absolutely not gone. Um, to put in, I know it takes a hell of a shift to put in to get yourself training. So, you know, to get yourself in, 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 in fight fitness. But nothing's impossible. If you push everything out of the road and if you pass all your medical and you pass all your own fitness tests and you have people there um, that can judge that. And I would per personally judge it on on good sparring. And if I got good sparring, then I would judge it from there before I would even decide to do anything. If I couldn't handle a good spar, um, then it would be no no go for me. Martin, when was the last time you actually had a competitive spar? I never really got much sparring. I, I sparred with Terry Dunstan, and I sparred a bit with Kevin Johnson, Lee Swaby, Lee Swaby. Um, and it was over one time with uh, Dennis Hobson, uh, Dennis Hobson Sr. Um, in Sheffield, this day, but Dennis over there, and I sparred a lot of guys over there. It wasn't really an awful lot of sparring, but I, I, I haven't really sparred in a career where, where most people do sparring. I haven't really had that opportunity because here in Ireland, there isn't many heavyweights in Ireland. And to bring a, a sparring partner over, as you know yourself, and a lot of people would know that's listening, it costs it costs money, and that comes out of a fighter's purse. And it comes out of a fighter. If he hasn't got a purse, then he has to make up that that money, that wage to give to somebody else to, to get to in preparation. So I haven't really had very hard sparring at all. I've basically just trained very, very hard, done a lot of pod work uh, with John Breen and Ian McGee and stuff throughout my career. And, and I had Bernard Chaka and Oscar. And I never really done much for her there. It was just basically in and, and fought, to be quite honest. So if someone was to try and tempt you, you'd consider it, basically? Absolutely. But I'm not going to... I'm not going to name anybody or anything. That, but I already applied... Well, you're going to know anyway. I applied to get my licence back... Um, five years ago and was turned down. And what was the reason they gave you back then, five years ago? They didn't give me a reason. They said, uh, we think that it would be uh, unrealistic for you to get your license back to fight. And that, and was, that, was, uh, that was only a year after you'd stopped, had your last fight? Correct. Hmm. First thing they done was ask for money because of fought in Germany, which I was ready to pay. I, I didn't even know that I hadn't paid them or anything else. And I sent them an email back saying, okay, the money's are. I'm going to do my medicals. And then I got an email back after doing the medical saying, we aren't going to grant you your license. Was that a tepper fight? I, I couldn't tepper fight. But, but I didn't. Um, I didn't just have, I asked them to justify it. I also asked them, um, if you feel so strongly about it, then why don't you bring me over? I'll spar one of the top 10 in Britain. And you can make your judgment of that or get one of your doctors and I'll do a fitness test for you and for your doctors. And you can then make a decision there, which I will gladly accept. Mm. But they were having none of it. So, sadly, that's, that's the way they left it. You know? So and and even, even now, just, even now, when I post things on Facebook, like even last night I'm doing... Uh, the 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 the, the press of chat twenty five press of a day for mental health suicide awareness etc. and I do that every day and even after doing it the, the last two days people are coming and going get you back in their ring but you they'll sell out they'll sell out and I know I would you know I know I'd sell out um but I wouldn't jump in to the boxing ring or to sell out a stadium for the reasons of earning money because I've never ever been in the ring for money because I've always stated. Um, when you go out and win titles and you fight the people that's in front of you, um, don't be dodging anybody. When you win your fights, the money will come naturally. If you go out with the attitude of money, then you forget the reason that you're in boxing. Mm. You know, 
but that's really my opinion. Um, there's a lot of people out there that do it for the money, which is journeymen, which are needed in boxing, and people that do it because it's it's an extra income for them, and they're good at it, and they enjoy doing it. So there's sort of a, a couple of different um, reasons for people boxing. But mine is solely because I love boxing, and I knew that I had the capabilities of, of becoming a champion. You know? I mean, if you're saying they declined your your license five years ago, I suppose, unless you were to use an alternative route to come back, then I suppose you wouldn't stand much of a chance of obtaining one five years after they declined you. Well, there, um, three weeks ago, I done a medical, I had a doctor of mine, I done a medical with a doctor of mine, just the basic one, your heart and stuff like that there, and everything came back absolutely brilliant, fitter than a normal person at my age. So there's a lot there and I know I can get another license. Like there's many there's not everybody in Ireland or England that hold the British Boxing Board of Control license or the, the, the Boxing Union of Ireland license. There's people like Lonnie Williams and others that have had to seek license elsewhere and they've done that and you know at the end of the day that's that's their income, it's their employment, it's their job. Um, and I don't think anybody has the right to take away um, your your the reasons for earning money. Do you know what I mean? There's if you have children and all, and this is all you've known. Like nobody in professional boxing, when they're finished, has something to drop onto because they give their life to boxing, and there's nothing else to fall back on. That you know, if, when you're finished boxing. I think Tim Witherspoon at the minute is trying to concrete something himself, which I um, have been trying, which I tried to do for a while over here. Um, for whenever boxers do finish, that there's something for them to go into. There's courses for them to go to, like fitness PT, something that they can actually. There's funding there for them to leave the sport and then go into something else. Because a lot of fighters don't have any education, and there's a lot of fighters don't have any trade. So whenever they can finish fighting, there's sort of a a lot of mental health comes down on there too because they're they're there for mental health problems as well. And not, not because they're getting hit in the head, because they're lost without it and they don't know where to go and they don't know how to get an income. Mm. You know? A lot of fighters, Ray Close, I've seen in uh, Ray Close. You know, you're well aware of Ray Close. Um, and that's saying anything about the job, but I see him in the in the airport pushing his trolleys about. He has a job, and I I'm with that. Everybody he got a job. Some people just can't get a job. So and it's hard enough out there. So I think if you're able enough to go out there and fight, I said, why shouldn't you? Why don't they make a division of over forties or over forty fives? Make a division fat, bigger gloves. You know what I mean? Headgear, and then they're still involved in the sport. People still want to see it. Do you know what I mean? So, but that's only my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it does seem people's perception that you you, you reach a certain age or a certain amount of fights uh, where people kind of deter whether you've had your day or not. And it's not just specifically to you, but just in, in general, it's like sometimes it's the boxer that knows best or maybe the closest person to him is trainer, whether, you know, they are tr truly kind of finished from the sport. But, Mm -hmm. Because you're the best person to answer that, aren't you? For yourself, no one else. Absolutely. You know yourself, Cassius. Every fighter out there knows. Also, before you can do anything, you have to be medically fit. Simple as. And if you aren't medically fit, then it's a, a zero zero. If you're in any way, pardon the pun, punchy. Um or anything that, then I would consider that you wouldn't take up boxing again. You would leave it and have something else in place for you to do. But people that are fully fit and are able, then why can't they? You know, these rules have been put in place by by governing bodies. But British Boxing Board of Control have done this in me. Be I've done it in me. Um, many other fitters have done it on. But yet with all... Fighters in America are still fighting at 44, 45, 46. Bernard Hopkins, okay, people say he's an exception. But where's the exception? His age is still his age. His number is still the same number. Regardless, because he's still going to get hit. 
but his reflexes didn't go or anything else. So I think it's, I suppose even if you go back in my age, it, they had no reason to date me. No reason. You know, no reason whatsoever. And it's just a bit sad that that happened because a lot of people, even them, were wanting me to go back and I wanted to go back also. And unfortunately, I got the shepherd's hook. There you go, you're not getting it. So. Martin, do you not think that some people will argue, though, that obviously you being, you know, spending however many years as a prize fighter, you're, you're kind of, it's, it's, it's built in you and that's your mentality to want to wanna fight. But sometimes you need maybe an outside perspective looking in to say whether someone should, should be fighting or not, because you're always going to want to fight, aren't you? So... You, you're not really going to look at that in any different way where there could be other people looking out for you that have a different alter, like, view on, on your your willingness to keep fighting. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with you. But as I say, that's, that's where I say, it's not just about hitting pads or hitting bags or, or, or getting physically fit. Tests have to be put in there. And if, if someone, you know, a trainer or... Obviously, a coach, a good coach, um, would have your best interest at heart. You should be able to put your confidence in that person for him. That you, you, basically saying, "I'm going to go for this. I want you to be hundred percent honest with me. If I can't produce the goods after ten weeks of hard training and sparring, I want you to tell me before I go and get a brain scan. I need you to tell me because yeah. I don't want to waste my time. Yeah. I don't want to get injured." And I don't want to make a fool of myself, but most importantly, I don't want to get hurt. Safety is the first and foremost. Um, so we're going to train hard. We're going to work hard. I'm going to have my dad right. I'm going to do everything right. But I want, you have to do it. And you should be even doing it regardless of age to know that you're actually able to get in and do it. There's a lot of fighters there that I see, Cassius, and with respect, that are in the ring fighting now. That shouldn't be in the ring, and they're they're twenty eight and twenty nine years of age. They yeah, I agree be. with that. I agree with that. But yet, with all a man that is fit and ready and well and capable, is told no. Who isn't punchy? Who isn't hasn't taken all the the, the fireworks that has been fired, and is able and ready and has all his professional people watching every step he does, every step he takes. Like I've I've my own personal friend of mine who's a doctor who does all his checks and everything else I have my eyes tested, my eyes are perfectly clear I can see you um, so I, I everything is in place sir. but I, as I say and unfortunately the spiders there that I've seen over the past lot of years that no one even when they're talking that they can't actually string two sentences together and to me that's time for a council or an organisation, whatever one it should be in, whatever a, a country it is, that they should be able to say, it's not happening. We are not giving you a licence for these reasons. Because there's people out there that have taken too many shots and they have been hit too hard. And, and if, if we go down to the, the, if we really go down to the statistics of this, how can, how can any... A lot of people that sit in these, these organizations and councils have never put a pair of gloves on their legs and wouldn't know anything about boxing. The, the, the watch boxing, they, they, they go through the stages of knowing about boxing, but I actually don't know really much about the actual physical side of it. But if you, if you have a gentleman that goes out to fight, right, and every time he steps in the ring, he gets beat. He gets beat up. He gets knocked down. Right. Whenever the British Boxing Board of Control and the BUI and other organisations that are refusing you to fight, like they refuse me with six losses, six losses were a good champ, the champions, one of which was who's now world champion. You know, Tyson Fury's world champion. He was the undisputed world champion. I fought him. Fought Michael Spratt, Commonwealth and European champion. Fought Audley Harrison. Fought Matt Skelton. Fought all these guys. But yet with all, a guy that has 70 losses and two wins can get in the ring and still earn his money, and I can't. Yeah, no, that's, that's a fair point. I don't think anyone can argue with that. 
That's a fair so, point, right? Where does where do they draw where does where do they draw the line? Is it is you know am I am I buying a license? Because this is what it is. I'm actually buying a license to let me fight in England, in Ireland, or anywhere in the world. I'm buying that license for that reason. I go and get a medical done to say that I'm medically fit. I have all my faculties, all my brains, my brains intact. I know what I'm doing. My eyesight's perfect. Um, I get all this done. And you have a promoter and you have a manager. You have a matchmaker, right? But yet with all these organizations and councils go, no, you're not fighting. You're not fighting him. They're, they're now picking fights of who you fight. So what's the point in them as taking money off somebody? You're not allowed to fight unless you get a manager. So you get a manager and you have a promoter, but yet with all, the British Boxing Board of Control and the BEI step in and go, no, we're not allowed that fight. What's the point in taking money off people for management and for licensing when you're not allowed to do it anyway? It's pointless. It's a waste of money. Council be there, take the medical, Oversee the, the, the fates, oversee the judging, the refereeing, the timekeeper, the, the, the supervisors in, in, inside the changing rooms. Absolutely. But when it comes down to the picking of fates and the management and promoter, then you need to step back because that's nothing to do with you. That's the business side of it because you're taking 4% of the people's purses anyway. So you can't really claim all this money and, and what's the point in having a manager? When it's over, when the council's overrated anyway, it's pointless. And and apart from that, the money that they're charging is absolutely scandalous, scandalous, scandalous. Here, the British Fox Motor Control have their um, their doctors that you must go to for your medical, and the medicals that you're paying is something like eight hundred pound. And it's only who, and I can go to my doctor, my own doctor, I can get a full medical done, I can get all my injections done for 40, 50, 40 pounds, 50 pounds, but they're charging extortionate money, over 100 pounds. Then you've your brain scans and everything else. Whereas if, when it totals up, it comes to just over maybe 800 pounds or more. Figures it wouldn't be 100% on, but it's roughly around that. But I can go up into the, Kingsbridge on the Lisbon Road in Belfast, and I can get my brain scan, my, uh, all my medicals, all my injections, everything done for three hundred and eighty pounds. Mm. So why are they ripping people off? And then they're charging for the license, as I said, one one what is it, one hundred and eighty pound for a boxer, or one hundred and fifty pound or something, one hundred and eighty pound or something for a boxer. For you, I've just bought a license of you, but you're still in control of what I do in my boxing. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, Martin, obviously, you were talking about, you know, you've faced some top-level, you know, domestic heavy heavyweights, you know, Sam Sexton's, the uh, Aldi Harrison's, the <laughs> Sprots, etc. But, Obviously, the notable mm -hmm. name from your record, as we all know, is Mr. Tyson Fury. And uh, your fight with him was back in, what, 2012? Eight years ago now, at the, yeah. as it was called then, the Odyssey. But what have you yeah. made of kind of the last couple of years since Fury made his comeback? Did you think he would come back? You know, he spent a lot of time out of the ring, gained a lot of weight. He ballooned up to 28 stone. Did you think that in that period that, that Tyson would come back, especially to do what he's done over the last year or so? It's easy to put on weight and if you're not naturally if you're not naturally not everybody would put on the weight that he does um, but he did I think it's fantastic that he did um, I knew that when he said he was coming back I knew that he was coming back he was going to win because his, his his skill level is unreal. He's a lot of skill. He, his mobility for such a big person is crazy. And you can see the, the work that Peter Fury over the years has put into him. And the, the work 
solely from Tyson Fury to actually put himself through it, to want it and do it. Um, yeah, so now he would come back and do it. I also predicted also that he would he would beat Dudley Wilder. I actually said six rounds. Um, you know, he beat him. And I also said, a lot of years ago on a couple of things with boxing news and stuff, I said he, he, he's making... It's it's good that he moves about the way he does and turns and he pulls and he slips and he does all that. That's absolutely brilliant, especially at heavyweight. And I said also, if he plants, just before the Dante Wilder fight as well, I said, if he plants his feet, because I fought him and I know what the power is in his hands, if he plants his feet and, and drives him home, but even in the Dante Wilder, he's still, not no stony in that, in a few of the other fights, he made the mistake of letting fighters come on top of him but also made the mistake of doing a, boxing as if he's a flyweight or a featherweight and wasn't driving his punches home and falling then on top of himself. He's too big to fall on top of himself. But I knew that he would come back. And I, I was actually happy that he did to pull himself out of, out of the, the place where he said he was um, to come back and, 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 and do what he's done. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, I knew what I'd done. I actually sparred him when he was 17. You sparred him when he was 17? Yeah. I sparred him when he was 17. I was in, in the house and I had a sore... I'm not going to say the word because I can't say it. Because it was... I'll try and say it. I had a sore soldier. Soldier. A sore soldier. Hold it. A sore soldier. Something that you know what I'm talking about. One of these. But he had a, I had a sore one in. A nugget Nugent. When I boxed for Magalada, Nugget Nugent asked me, rang me up and says, there's a big lad down here and he wants to spar. He's heading home to England, blah, blah, blah. And I says, right, okay, I'll come down. He says, only a couple of rounds, no bar. Um, so I was in the gym and there comes Tyson Fury walking through, ducking under the door and I me, oh, so he says, big lad here. Do you know what I'm saying? Anyway, cut long story short. We've done the four rounds, sparred the four rounds. Very good he was. And I remember sitting on the apron of the, the ring and I says to him, do you want to And he told me, he said to me, oh, you're a big lad. He's wearing this, like a big snorkel. And I says, tell you what, kid, there's me. You're saved. No, you haven't even grew into yourself yet. But there's no way a big lad like you, with the power you have there, you couldn't be world champion. Chapers me. Another four years of growing. And the next time was, well, them years later, I ended up fighting him. Martin, let me ask you, when you sparred him, how old were you? When I sparred him? Um, what are you just tasting Fury now? Uh, early 30s. I don't know. 30... 32? 30, 30, 32? 30, 30, 30, yeah, maybe 32. I was... Trying to do my sums here. I was um, 33. 32 or 33, it was or 30, something like that. Hold on, he was 17, so back 15 is, yeah, I was 30, 33 or 34, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you told, you told him, like after sparring him for four rounds, that you didn't believe that he would become world champion? I believe, I said you will become. Oh, you will become, sorry. Will become. It, it was at the time where um, there was something to do with, Something to do with the politics and boxing about he, he wasn't getting on the, the England team. So he came over to be on the Ireland team to the Olympics. For 2004, it was, that's, that's correct, because um, cause I went to Olympic, I went to Olympic qualifiers in 2004 with Andy Lee and the rest of the boys. And Tyson Fury was trying to get on that team. So he was there, 2004, I think it was. Uh, yeah, and then I fought him eight years later. So what years was he when I fought him? You fought him in 2012. So I was eight years back from that. So he was 25, he was 25 then. I would be, I would be cracked now. I'd yeah. be right. So it was 2004 that I sparred him. So right. early, two, late 2003, 2004, I sparred him. Wait, wait, Martin, when you fought him, though, in 2012... Um, I mean, what did you think about Fury then? And did you think that, you know, we're, we're looking at something special here? When I fought him in 2012? Yeah, when you fought him in, you know. <clears throat> what I didn't know, what, what I, I, I brought over a big guy roughly similar size to Tyson Fury. 
Um, and I was going at him full, full pelt, and I was just too fast and everything else. And what surprisingly shocking, shocking to my system was step well, there was a lot of things. He took my ring saw, they heated all the water up, and they didn't give me the boxing gloves the 10 minutes before the fight. The night before, they said that the fight was off, that they were bringing in Matt Skelton. So they'd done absolutely everything, the ragged. On the day of the weigh-in, they brought in a new contract to say that the fight, because the Irish title fight is only 10 rounds, they brought in a new contract, that's why I was a red on YouTube, um, to say that they changed the rules to 12 rounds. Where? Well, this is this is where boxing is, is, is a bit of a mess. How can an organisation like the Boxing Union of Ireland that holds its, its, its titles that are only 10 rounds, but in, in 2012, the day of my weigh-in, they brought in a new contract for me to sign to say that it was going to be a 12-round fight. And after, the, there was a big row that day, this was on the day of the weigh-in, after they changed it back to 10-round fight. Now, is that complete madness or what? That is complete nuts. And you and this is the councils that are supposed to be looking after fighters. So where was they looking after fighters? That was by simply looking after mechanistry with respect. Um, that's what they were doing. But whenever I stepped in the ring, going back to where we were, Cassius, stepping into the ring with Tyson Fury, Tyson's tall, he's big, I'm six foot three, he's six foot nine. When you're starting talking to him, it's fine. When you're starting talking to somebody at that season street, when you, I'm sure a lot of fighters will, will know exactly what I'm talking about. When you step into the ring with Tyson Fury, <clears throat> it goes from six foot nine, the amount that looks about seven foot ten. Absolutely enormous. Because the ring is completely empty. There's only you and him and the referee. And it looks massive. But what was suddenly surprising, but but when I think back on it, how nice it was, he fought me southpaw. The only southpaw I ever, the only southpaws I fought was one of the amateurs and the other one was Audley Harrison. Mm. And I never had, the only sparring partner I had for the southpaw when Audley Harrison was Lee Swabby. I sparred Lee. And when Tyson came out and started boxing so far as me, he'll switch again because I've seen him do it. He'll switch again. But he didn't. His punches are absolutely thunderous. Absolutely thunderous. People have no idea how actually hard he hits. He taps. If you watch him, he taps with his hand. He taps everything. It's just a tap. He doesn't put a lot into him. And the tapping is enough that it leaves you hurt. Not so much. It, it, it is hurt. It actually hurts you where it takes you at least 20 to 30 seconds to try and recover from the shots. They're like, it's, it's like a thunderous shot. It stays in your it stays in your body. It's like your body still shakes. He hits you that hard. I really, and and he's, he, for the stays of him, great body shots. You can throw great body shots. And I don't know. I just is that is that how your body felt? You say about your body shakes when when he hits you that hard. Is that how you felt after that body shot? Oh, absolutely. He took a wind. He t you know, in fairness, he took the wind out of me. He not, well, the first one was a, a knock that slipped and went over. But regardless, um, the second shot that he hit me, the body shot, it took the absolute wind completely out of me. Now I did recover. Now the disappointment that I hold to this day which we all know the rules of boxing. And the rules of boxing very stately, stately clear, say, and it's in the British Boxing Board of Controls books and everybody else's, there's no fourth man ever allowed in the ring, no matter what, unless the referee allows it. Unless the referee allows you corner man out to let in, if you throw a towel in, the referee's allowed to lift it and throw it back out. You're not allowed in the ring. I had recovered after the eight seconds. I was already recovered and ready to fight. And my corner man was allowed in the ring. 
he heard it and said to me, are you ready to go? I says, I'm ready to go. Come on, let's go. There was only 20 seconds left in that round. And my corner man get in. Unfortunately, he get in, and that's the way, that's the way it goes. He get in the ring, but he shouldn't have been allowed in the ring. I shouldn't have been allowed, because that was a big fight for me. An Irish Stadel fight against Tyson Fury, the up and coming. I should have been allowed that next round. I should have been allowed to finish that round and the next one and whatever else to go at it. The referee made a blunder. In my eyes, he made a blunder because the referee should never allow that to happen. My corner man jumped in and went, that's it over. That, that doesn't happen in boxing. That's not allowed to happen. So, but these things happen. But at the end of it, I went home with a lot of education that you should always spar somebody southpaw as well. So educated that way. And that is why I've been train people myself. I train them to be the expected, the unexpected. Um, but Tyson Fury, boxing southpaw, it was like, this is me buns. It, it, and I, I had, my sparring partners were all orthodox. So I've been training all this time, spending all this money on Big, big Dave, the box off the docks and then I get in the ring and, and Tyson Fury goes, I right, get on, there you go, take it out of that. So it made, it made my work even harder again. But it doesn't take away the fact that anything, doesn't take anything away from Tyson Fury. I've had the chance to fight him again. Um, I, I believe I know how to beat him. I suppose everybody does, but I believe I do. Um, he has serious power in both hands. Serious, serious power in both hands. That's why I keep on insisting. And I said this, I said, that, I said to Andy Lee as well, and I said it when I was over, when his father, when he got out of jail, and we were in it, I was over sparring with him for the Derry to sort of fight. And you seen the way he left Derek, Derek's eyes two up there like that. And Derek doesn't mark up too easy. You seen the Andy Wilder's face. He absolutely devoured him. And that was just stepping in and, and hitting him with shots and pushing him back. His power is, is... I wish to God he would just... I wish to God he would listen to me because I said it from the very start. Stop jumping about too much. Step. Do steps and drive the punches home. I don't think it'd be any heavyweight will stand there will be there after... Couldn't be after six rounds, seriously. Honestly. Because, he, I mean, the way you're talking there, you wouldn't have been surprised by his tactics in the second Wilder fight. But it did take a lot of people by surprise, his approach into that fight. He pretty much told the world what he was going to do in that in that second fight. And, and he did it. I mean, he said he was going to do it in a couple of rounds. It took him seven odd rounds. But he pretty much told everyone... The game plan, which is kind of all to do with Fury's uh, psychological mind games as well. But people really weren't listening to it um, when he was saying it. So I listened. I listened. I knew he was. I, I listened to him and he, I knew he was me. He's going to go straight at him. He's going to push him in the corner. And you know, see if you watch the back cases, you, you watch, you, you're above the box in a long time. The only welder looked like a a wee boy out of his depth. Looked like a wee boy out of his depth that he couldn't handle him. He didn't know what to do. Fury's just, he's just, honest to God, I would, I would love to get him to hit something that, that has a a, a, a a pressure bar. I know when you hit it, it gives you the what pressure's in it. I would love for him to do bump one, two on a, honest to God, it would go through the, go through the scales. Mm. Honestly. I remember, I'll say this here, because he's world champion. I had the, 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 the privilege of, of fighting the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world and, and I was over sparring him and everything else. I'll tell you this. When I went over to spar him, um, Jason Garvin from Florida went over also. And it was an ODR, a couple of our guys. It was a, you know, a young lad, I forget what his name was. Uh, funny enough, I, he, was a, he was a Muslim and I me and him had a great laugh. And he was saying that he only eats at a certain time because of the Ramadan. And I was going, how are you getting in the ring with him to spar him? And how are you going to do this here when you have to fast and everything else? And blah, blah, blah. He says, I've been doing it for years. And 
had a great laugh, and I said, just move your head a lot. Move your head a lot. You have to move your head a lot, because he can he just pick you off. Mm. And all in all, for is deadly. So, cut long story short. I get tennis bars tasting first, and I'm slipping and moving and rolling and pushing them back and moving, and he's throwing shots now, he's making a miss. And Jason Garvin, Garvin from Florida, and I said, Jason, see before you get in there, move your head, see if he sticks one on you, just that silly jab, and he's worn big gloves. You will feel this, the effect of this, because it ain't got nothing to do with the gloves, it's the force that comes through his hands. So he's blood, he's blood in a way, or he will run me. Not breathing. I go. go. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, he's raised it up knowing you're sitting here, like, it's going. Looks like well. Can you hear me? Doesn't move his head. Pop, 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 pop. He gets hit. He gets through the ring, I jump the chains and over, back in again, bop, 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 working away. He's back in again, bop, bop, bang the head of him. So the spawn was going on, and Jason says, oh, I need to stop. His eye was swollen and everything else. Jason was doing his best. Tyson Fury was done the rounds with us. Then he started on the pods. In the spawn alone, this is how I have confidence in what he does. I trained with him while I was over in Bolton. And we 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 just trained together in the gym and everything else, right? He was doing 30 second breaks in between the sparring rounds. So we were getting a minute, fresh man getting in. He was taking 30 seconds and sparring again. So we'd done eight rounds with him there. Peter gets in and starts doing the pods with him. So I'm starting to hit the bag, watching, watching, going on, watching, and watching, and watching. And, uh, it's going on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And I'm at the bag and I go, on, jeez, what's going on here? Next thing to you, right? That's us, that's us, that's us, on, that's us, on, that's us, that's it, that's right, that's over. And he goes, well, wow, great. Do you want to do one more? And Peter Fury says, no, you've done enough. He says, money to do. He says, you've done 16 rounds there. 16 rounds. Not even a not even a sweat. Mm. Not even a sweat. And I just looked. I saw. I just looked. And I went, "That's that's world champion material art. That's world champion material art." Thirty second breaks. This was right through the sixteen rounds. Right. Four four, four different sparring partners, all doing two rounds each. Everybody getting in fresh, and then he goes to the pods, and constantly works it, and he's slipping and moving and rolling. For sixteen rounds. Wow. That that, that that's and if you ask Jason Fury, he will tell you the same thing. Mm. That's exactly what. And Peter has put them through yet. <sighs> I wish him all the best. I think if he, I think Anthony Joshua has the ability to beat him, but in in, in order for Anthony to beat him. Anthony would need to start moving his head and be more flexible and movable. If he goes over that transition, the, the trans, Anthony obviously has the power. If he goes over that transition walk of trying to deliver, Fury will catch him very, very easily. Very, very easily. And he'll, he'll make him look really bad. I think Tyson Fury will beat him in six rounds if he does that. So they. Oh, it's a, listen, it's a fight that we all want to see, obviously. Um... They've all both got fights upcoming at some point this year, but we hope to see that fight next year. But, yeah. um, Martin, thank you very much for your time today. I appreciate it. I know you've been sat in the car for the last 45 minutes, so... Sorry, mate. Sorry, absolutely brilliant. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very, very much. It's great talking to you. It always is. Now that you've got my number, you're going to have to stop sending me dirty messages. Coogan... I don't appreciate the very messages. I, I asked you for your number. I've had it all along. I told you I saved it as Big Big Rogie. I don't know who Big Rogie is, but it, you it were... used to be it used to be Big Rogie and Teleportation Fury, and then it was Wee Rogie. <laughs> <laughs> he just made me look really small. Uh, but no, I wish him and the, his team the best luck, and all fighters. Wish all fighters the best luck and safety to all of them, and the best of luck to them, and. Best luck for you too, and keep up the good work. You're doing a great job, Arkasius. Absolutely fantastic. Appreciate that. A big, a 
big shout out to Ted. You have to do this for me, please. A big shout out to my good friend who absolutely loves your channel and watches it all every single time. Knows every person you interview. He's from Belfast. His name's Charlie Hillick, and he owns Academy One Fitness. Charlie Hillick. Charlie Hillick, Academy One Fitness. In Charlie Hillick, Academy One Fitness. I'll okay. send you. I'll send you on WhatsApp. Go on, not a problem. And you can you can put it in. Big Charlie Charlie Hillick. Charlie Hillick, Academy. Academy, Academy One Fitness. Academy One Fitness. I've got it. He absolutely loves you. So see if you say a big shout out to Guy Belfast. Hope you're still watching my videos. Big Charlie. He will absolutely, and he's a terrible good fella. Do you know how good he is, Cassius? See all the boxers in Belfast? He lets them all use his gym for nothing free. When, where you go? All free, on their coaches. Not a, not a penny. Big up Charlie then. Big up Charlie. Yeah, big up Charlie. He actually went, do you know how much he, he loves boxing? He actually went and bought a boxing ring and put it in his gym at the back with the bags and all. Put all the bags and all up here he is. There you go, that's for the boxers. There you go. Great stuff. Um, Martin, I'll let you crack on with your day, but um, yeah, thank you very much. Much appreciated. And uh, hopefully we'll get to catch up with you again real soon. Yes, love you, bro. See you later. Safe driving and uh, keep yourself uh, safe. Okay, buddy. God bless, mate. Top man. Thank you very much, Martin Rose. See you later, mother. Bye-bye, mate.